Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle run through of most, and probably not all, of my British slash newspaper slash comic book books that are not Treasury of British Comics. Those sort of things. Also annuals and things, of course. If I start including everything, it'll be about a five hour uh, run through of all of the books. And I'm just going to go through sort of histories of various reference books, all sort of related to the A to Z of British newspaper strips, which I got yesterday. And I thought, well, I'm just going to run through all of my books. And again, there's always a couple that I've missed. I'll probably find them a little while later. So this one. There were a few of these because when I went up to uh, an estate sale up at uh, Gosh recently, I saw a few of these and I thought, oh, I didn't realise there'd been a number of these books. But this one is really good. A big comic book of 1988, even though it says 1988, many of the comic strips included in this are probably earlier. Unfortunately, it doesn't give any date. It doesn't give any date, so there's stage school. I'm really not certain, robot granny. Now, perhaps someone will say they're all from 1988, but I think some of them, the artwork, lollipop, I'm quite certain some of these were very much earlier. So uh, this is uh, 250 pages of brilliant comics and really worth checking out. You can pick them up, reasonably priced. This one, I think a couple of pounds I bought. And this is picture strips from Wizard Chips, Buster and Whoopi. So I assume just from that, the fact that Wizard and Chips, that wasn't going in 1988, I'm quite certain. So there's that volume. And I've got a few other sort of related ones to that, which I'm not gonna show you, but I thought I'd show you that one. Now this is superb, and this one was very, very cheap. I love Forbidden Planet. They have a great sales section. Sometimes you can find some real gems in Forbidden Planet. <laughs> There's also a lot of other books that uh, you might not particularly want at the prices, but you can often find in their sales section some great ones, 99 pence. I've bought a few 50p ones as well, books that I think, you know, wow. And it's a great story as well. Pat Mills, absolute classic. And great story all the way through, obviously in black and white. Charlie's War, really classic. I've got two of these volumes and they are both absolutely excellent. So we're checking it out. This one, Penny Dreadfuls and Comics. And this is lovely, absolutely brilliant. This one's actually a loan exhibition of Oldenburg University in West Germany. So <laughs> quite a, now it's slightly battered, but it's got a number of sections here. Obviously story papers, it runs through various, the old Penny Dreadfuls, Got this one, Young Tom's School Days. And you've got uh, some very odd ones there, Victorian ones, Edwardian ones, Billy Bunter, Sexton Blake. Ah, I've just suddenly thought I've got a Sexton Blake one that probably could have been included in that as well. Anyway, Sexton Blake Library. There were quite a few of those. Girls Cinema, the school. I've never seen any of those. Girls Cinema. Hmm. School Friend and many others. And it's a great little book. Weirdly, it jumps forward at the end. It's got a little bit about the 50s. You've got the golden arrow there. I assume that was 1950s. And then Dandy, Beano and Clan. And you've got, but there's a bit of the back that sort of doesn't really fit with that. So it does jump forward a bit, but it's still got a nice little uh, bit of the back there about Boyfriend, Marty, Mirabelle, all the um, British girls comics that came out in the 50s and 60s. Uh, girl, Jackie, Ginty, Judy, Mandy, etc. Unfortunately, it doesn't show many examples. You've got here Girl, Bunty and Judy. Some really brilliant artwork. I've got a few of them. I haven't got vast numbers of them, but it's nice just to have a few. And I think the artwork is superb, especially like Misty and those things. But there's great examples of artwork all the way through those. This one was an exhibition, uh, Comics Unmasked, Art and Anarchy in the UK. It was fine. Paul Gravit. I... I'm not saying it was the best of exhibitions. I would love to see what I consider a proper, massive study of all the comics, but it's, it still shows, obviously, art and anarchy, and uh, most of the comics, obviously, associated with that. If you classify action, aggro, and you've got there, the, obviously, the strip there. Uh, Nemesis in the Deathbringer. I was never a fan of Nemesis, I must admit. I wasn't too keen on the artwork, but it's got a whole range of different other artwork as well. Sort of fascinating ones like this one. Northern Looking Glass album. I mean, wow, what an unusual piece of work that. And the, uh, another story is King, Bike Boy, and many others. So a lot of great examples. You should be able to pick up this. Still reasonably priced, I would have thought. Obviously the exhibition was quite a few years ago. I'm not certain now. 
When was it? Probably doesn't say. Oh, he's got Preacher at the front. Um, no, can't find. Got to be about Dave McKean as well. Good old Mr. Punch. This one, really unusual one. Pick this up. Real battered copy. I think it was at a comic convention. Eagle Classics. Fraser of Africa. Really good. I mean, obviously, Frank Bellamy. Just classic. Absolutely. Though, it obviously, originally, was a library book. You've got the library ripped out there. Frank Bellamy's got a bit about him there. And also Churchill there, Eagle, Dan there, the Shepherd King, and Fraser of Africa. That's a pity. I think there are a few others, these sort of volumes. I remember seeing them when they came out. I didn't buy them at the time. I don't know why. They were actually quite expensive, probably. I mean, they were full size, of course, as well. But for some weird reason, I sort of ignored them at the time. But it was £7.50. And this is uh, 1950s, 40 years after. The, well, that dates it, doesn't it? So it's 1990. Now, this one is absolutely superb that dynamite comics produce loads of brilliant books like this i really wish they'd bring out some more they seem to have stopped before covid obviously covid there were there was quite a few and they were changing slightly even then but i i thought really they were always impressive they brought out art of red sonja uh deja thores and they were absolutely superb book. and this was superb masters fan and there were a few listed as well that were going to come out, but didn't. And it was such a pity. I thought, you know what? That would be an amazing book. But sadly, they just didn't come out. But it's just got so many examples of beautiful artwork. from. Now, it's not all, obviously, UK. Some of it is the Spanish art. But there's a lot of examples of British comic books. At the start here, Johnny Future. Oh, that's another one, of course. I could have included, but that would then include all of the other treasury of British comics. But that is a lovely one, Johnny Future. I think it was in Fantastic. I love those ones. You've got here other stuff, The Slave of the... And then, so some of these, Once Upon a Time, lots and lots of examples in this book. Brilliant, absolutely beautiful. Star of one. When you go through this, Star of Wonderland, you think, why aren't these books available? Why aren't these stories available in massive collected editions? If it was in the States, I'm certain that these books would be readily available. For some weird reason, I mean, Treasury of British Comics are doing a fine job. Hibernia is another company that's doing Hibernia Comics, doing a great job. But it's so slow to see these volumes. And I understand the reasons. It's impossible to produce. But it would be nice if we had a Fantagraphics, IDW, that was really creating lots of great volumes of these books. Because these stories are superb. And this one's got lots of... Uh, other examples of Spanish artists. So I would love to see more books. But still, I'm always happy when they come out. There's a new one, Cat Girl, that I'm, I will be getting that. Sadly, it's only, a, only, I say, 112 pages or something, which I think is a pity. I think it should have been like a 300 or 400 page collection. I really enjoyed the Cat Girl. It says the best of Cat Girl. I don't know how many, of course, issues came out. This is a good one, Daleks. Um, well, I think there's also a new one actually recently. I don't know. There's a. I think it's not connected with this selection. This one is the 1960s ones. So he's got some really beautiful artwork and some really crystal clear. Some really super sharp. Some slightly blurry as well. But they're, they're, I think it's just a lovely book and a beautiful paintings there. Just absolutely glorious. A really good story actually. I quite enjoyed the story. The Ultimate Collector's Edition of 1960s Strip. This one I haven't read yet, I must admit. I will one day get around all these books. Don't read every single thing. The Daily Dreads. It looks great, but it's on glossy paper. I wish it was on matte, of course. That's, I'm not a keen fan of glossy paper. I always feel that uh, it just doesn't look as good on glossy. But it's got lots of fine examples. It looks like it's a really good book. One day I will probably even get around to reading it. I love the old dread stories but you can only read so much in a day and there's some more and this i think there was a couple of other volumes this is volume one 1981 to 1986 you can see the art by etc i think there's another one volume two maybe a volume three i'm not certain but any strips like that just brilliant and a really really nice volume as well it, it does feel a quality book which is great so 2018 brought that out of course strange enough this one's lovely jeff hawk sydney jordan and i think it's just 
However, it is in French, <laughs> which of course does make, but you can generally work out the story. It's not like a, a struggle to sing, oh, you know what, there's an alien, there's, some, there's moon landings, there's various other conflicts and problems happening. You can gen get the general gist of the story. There's obviously some alien woman that's deciding to uh, not, doesn't look very promising exactly in that situation. But also, I think it's about like four or five strips in here, maybe maybe less, I don't know. But it's certainly a lovely little book, but unfortunately in French, I don't know how it overlaps with the British ones. No idea. But uh, this one, Jeff, this is from uh, Charlie. Supplement, I don't know, it's weird, isn't it? Special there. However, let's get to the next one. Giles. I picked up a load of these and I've got a few more. I, I couldn't find them all, but I did pick up quite a few. And this one, even though it says on the cover, it says they're 99 pence Oxfam. I think I did buy this one from Oxfam. I bought a pile of them at my local market and they were like 25 pence each or something. And the thing is that's great about them is that they are of their time. Because there you can see the date, Daily Express, December 21st, 1965. And then you've got all the sort of, so you can really see the period. You just sort of, there's obviously things that were referenced at the time that uh, there's about loans and various things. And uh, this is 1966. So it's going through each and every day. So that's February the 1st, February the 3rd. Then there's one from February the 6th. Now I don't know why there's gaps. Maybe they didn't include them all. I'm not certain. February the 8th, 13th. Yes, it's possible that there were some that didn't get included, which is a pity. Would it be nice if all of them had been included? I might be wrong, please put in the comments below. Maybe they just didn't feature on that day or something. No idea. I never didn't uh, regularly get Giles and read it. I mean, I remember reading them, but I can't recall them, particularly every single one, of course. But it's a really lovely little volume, that one. And I've got another one here, as I mentioned, this one I bought in Oxfam. This was 1967. So you've got some great little stories. Again, you can really capture the period as well. Obviously, the, the fashions, the designs, and some unusual ones as well. This one, the way it's been scanned, has it been scanned from the, the actual newspaper? Whereas this one looks like it's from, obviously, the original, because it's really quite sharp. Whereas this one is very blurry in comparison. So it's very odd. Did something get lost or something, or they weren't available? Very, very strange. This one, King Arthur and his knights. Uh, very enjoyable, the complete adventure. And weirdly... It's also got, I think, another story in it as well. Yes, I mean, it's got on the front King Arthur, The Complete Adventures. And then, weirdly, they don't bother mention the fact that it also includes this very enjoyable story at the back, The Swiss Family Robinson. Why? You know, you've got a good half of it is King Arthur, and fine as it is. King Arthur story, obviously, though it doesn't look anything like the King Arthur story that I was watching only a couple of days ago that was set in Roman period. This does not look very Roman, but still... That was, uh, and this has got a number of other ones, like this, Swiss Family Robinson. And at the back, I always love the kind of these sections you've got here about the other ones, book packs, Modesty Blaze, Thriller Library, this one here, um, Worlds of Don Lawrence. And what else you've got here? No, nothing else there. But it's a nice little book. It's one of these, uh, unfortunately, it's one of these flexi-bound volumes. And they always have a tendency, and I think after a period of time, to get very dented in this central bit because you read it, open it up, I'm not certain how to open them to actually avoid that. It's literally impossible. I think they, when I get them, generally, they're already pre-bent. So uh, it's like really odd. But it's just a beautiful book. Very nicely, nice quality, very sharp. Looks great. This one is a lovely book. This is obviously comics, not newspaper strips or anything or anything. But it features lots of very unusual stuff, which is all sort of magazines and things. Many of them I have never, ever seen at Comic Marts or at comic conventions, or anywhere, in comic shops. I mean, Colorado, Western Comic, Rocky Mountain, some I have seen. Bulldog, Britain, Tarzan Comic, Plastic. Now, even those ones, some of these ones, I don't think I've ever seen a copy of Plastic Man, or Modern Comics, the British versions of them, from Outer Space, Come the Invisible Raiders. Nyoka, I've seen those. Seen quite a few copies of Nyoka. Around Marvel Family, I've got a few of those um, somewhere, of, uh, I love, Miss Mar not Miss Marvel, Mary Marvel, and all those sort of ones, and they're great ones. Master Comics, but uh, most of the others. And it's got a few little strips in here as well, so that, that's great. The Saint, oh wow, terrific adventure. Flash, obviously not the Flash, but you've got Flash Comics. This is just a beautiful, very, very thin. You should be able to pick up copies of this, readily available. 
I just love this book. It's just so many, like, wow. How many magazines that were created and why is it virtually impossible to ever find these? These are the sort of things you'd think would turn up in Oxfam's. People would be clearing out their, you know, lofts or something and they'd be thinking, you know what? Oh, we just get rid Because they're not, I don't think there's any real vast value. Some obviously maybe, but I don't think that I can see that. Really? You, uh, maybe I'm completely wrong, but personally, most of them are about 16 pages falling to pieces, rusty staples, all those sort of things. Maybe that's the reason they just got dumped because of course they end up getting mouldy in the, you know, in the, I've, I've been to like places and I've seen like mouldy copies of some of these things and you think, oh dear, horrible. I don't like mouldy comics, I must admit. You look at them and think, that's just gone a bit too far. And also rusty staples as well is another problem. I often just take the staples out and then of course you've got pages get disconnected sometimes now this one gothic for girls this is an amazing little book i love this absolutely full of tons and tons of it now there's obviously a few examples a few pictures there of things you've got misty etc it's generally misty but you've got uh, other comics as well but it's just a beautiful little book and it's well this one's uh printed obviously great amazon an amazon one always know an amazon book because there's always a slight bend of the I wish they'd make hardback. I wish this was available in hardback. I would have bought the hardback. Prefer that, but it's got a great little like tables here. So you've got here various things: ghost, witch, vampire, skeleton, devil, and it puts a breakdown of the type of uh, spider woman, demon, magician, zombie, etc. Apparently, only one in a serial, three in a single, etc. What a great little breakdown! That's the sort of thing that really sort of you think, "Ooh, that's interesting stuff," for me anyway. I love these books. These are coming out. There's a summer special, I think, out at the moment. Must get a copy of that at some point. Battling Britons. And this is just full of tons of great examples. In ye days of old, you've got here again. I don't know which one that one is. The Sword of Camulus, Camulos, or something like that. The Strike Squadron. And I love all these old ones. I've got a quite, not a vast number, but I've got a few of these sort of battle ones. I remember reading them when I was like in the 60s. I love those. Not that I was ever a mega fan of the war comics or Navy or etc. Uh, just, but it's still, they were interesting. And I always loved, even now you can find them. Normally battered to pieces. I don't know, they must have been like put in the back pockets. I've never seen really clean copies of them. They always seem to be falling to pieces at the markets. Whereas you can get other things in books and magazines and things. A reasonable condition. But those ones, for some weird reason, are always like warped. As if they were stuck in the water or something for ages and ages. Very strange. But you've got lots and lots of examples there. The Roar of the Tempest. There must be millions of great stories that sadly are very hard to find. Charlie the Tester. I don't know what that was about, but still, we have faith in it. But these are great. Really worth checking out these books. As I said, obviously, this is the third one. I think there's the Summer Special. Maybe there's a fourth volume now. I don't know. But really worth checking. And reasonably priced as well. Love these sort of ones. Oh yes, I've got that one. I was wondering, not thinking. Oh, but this one, eighty-five percent off. You can't beat an eighty-five percent off. Uh, Three pound. Probably was even cheaper than that. I think I bought it in uh, some shop, um, like Oxfam or something. And uh, you've got here a little bit of romance, and you've got some really fine examples, obviously of all, all the pop of the period. Obviously, uh, Small Faces, Slade. Uh, you got you want to be an actress? I don't know. Stacey Dorning, of course, Black Beauty and. Uh, various other show, keep it in the family. Yes, I love that. That was a great show. And you got here, Jackie. Um, I don't know. Take that. I wouldn't know who they were. Just had to look. And and more information. It's just a lovely little book. A reasonably nice volume. I think they brought out a few of these sort of Jackie books. I'm not certain if they're all the same or if they're additional volumes. But I, they're great, nice books to have. I wish they'd bring out other ones because of like Mirabelle and Romeo. And um, one of those ones, Marilyn. There were quite a few of those sort of ones. This one, Jane at War. And this is the original, and well, it's got a whole range of stories. And they, well, this is quite a decent volume of stories. You've got all the way through there. And the artwork is absolutely fine. I love it. And it's very sharp, very good. And I think it's about, uh, I don't know, unfortunately, it doesn't have a page number. Is that weird? 1945, obviously all the way from 1939. Now that means it doesn't include all the stories because it was 1932. I don't know if there's any volumes anywhere 
of all of the uh, Jane stories from like 1930, 1932, 33, 34. That would be brilliant if they came out. They're good, decent stories, but uh, just fascinating. Obviously, you're capturing the war period, definitely. Uh, this is a volume that's really worth checking out. I was very pleased to find a copy of this. So uh, that's uh, World War II. And related to that, Comics at War, Dennis Gifford, a legend, of course, and uh, 1939 to 1989. And this has got loads of brilliant examples. Chips, you got Handy Andy, the odd job man, Rip Van Wink. He's seven, 700 years old. Wow. Obviously the Highlander. Maybe in his, there can only be one or something. Who knows? It's the Gremlins. And there's just lots of uh, great ones there. Sandy Powell, Radio Fun, all these magazines and comics. Just absolutely beautiful. Barrage Balloons, The Beano. I mean, look at that. Just <laughs> really... Issue 2 is out, 213, wow. Keyhole Kate, Our Gang, and many other examples. It's a lovely book. This is a really great little collection of war books, Comics at War. This is another war-related one. For saying I don't really like war books, I don't. I'm not a mega fan of war books, or war films even, but I've got quite a few of these sort of things, the thrillers. This one's a thriller one. This one is, oh, another one. It's war. Let's just go through this one first. Thriller Library, this is full of lots of examples. Look at that. Just be Buck Jones. You've got tons of information about all the stories. Again, many of these issues, probably very hard to find. Ride with the Devil. And there were loads of these, like 1960s, 62, 62. The artwork was superb. I mean, the covers were. Now, I would love to see a full, massive volume of all these covers. And you've got some of the examples there. I mean, some are just great pieces of artwork. Just beautiful. And it would be lovely to see them sort of obviously full page. This is a beautiful volume. This one's Battle Britain, Thriller Picture Library. There were so many of these. And this book is superb. This one, Steve Holland and David Ashford. Definitely worth checking out. You can find copies of this, I'm quite certain. Check his uh, website, Steve Holland. He's got lots of great books. I love his Forgotten Authors. Absolute classic book. Books. Four volumes. Masterpiece. Absolutely brilliant. Now this one. James May, forward by James May, and uh, soon got other, David Roach. David Roach did another book that I really love, and this is full of great, again, you see the examples, just really beautiful artwork all the way through. Obviously, if you're into war books, I mean, it's, I think, but even if you're not, some of you still can appreciate the, but look at that, just intent, you must have, it must have used a lot of red on that one, and the green, look at, I mean, some of it is just, and this book, this book is just full of just awesome examples. So you really, if you love sort of any British books, this has got to be one. Best war comic cover, art from Battle War, War at Sea, etc. Just superb. Sort of related, the war libraries. And again, this has got lots of examples. Not so big, but it's got lots of information, all the various stories, all the issues, obviously 1975, 75, 76, 83, war, and so on. This is just another brilliant, and again, this is from Steve Holland and David Roach. Just masterpiece, sort of information. The only sad thing is always when you go through this, you think, so hard to find these books. Like I say, occasionally you can pick them up at comic conventions, occasionally in a market. I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen a copy of any of these magazines in my local sort of charity shops. You think, why don't they turn up in charity shops? Looking. This one, Best of Looking. And jun uh, also Junior TV Times. I don't remember that one. The 70s. Junior TV Times. I really don't remember. I Maybe I saw it, but I don't. Got Roger Moore. Cat Weasel. Not a favourite Cat Weasel, I must admit. Though the new one was quite interesting. Unusual. You got this one, The Ace of Wands Magic. So you've got lots of uh, that period. Uh, groups. Focus. You know what? I've never heard of Focus. Dutch Quartet. Hmm. Roxy Music, of course, everyone <laughs> Blackfoot Sue. I mean, some of really brilliant. Meet the Saturday Scene Stars. And lots of Doctor Who's enemies are free, apparently. In Weetabix, great little bit of adverts there. With obviously Tom Baker and Saturday Spectaculars, The Tomorrow People. Just a great little book. If there's any book that needs to be in your collection, I think this has to be it. Masters of British Comic Art by David Roach. Absolute masterpiece. Weighs a ton, covers a whole range of British comics. 
lots and lots of examples all the way through obviously Beano, Disneyland. It's quite depressing because quite often you find pages you think, oh, I would love to see the rest of that story. So many in here of stories that you think, oh, so hard, I've seen that, it's fear. Hmm, never even thought about getting that. I've seen those at bookmarks, oh, Commando, many, many other examples. Oh, that one's great, Kelly's Eye, Valiant. But it's just real quality book, girls' comics, this one, Mirabelle. You've got Daughter of the Isles. Just examples that probably very hard to get copies now of many of these. I mean, you of course can, but it's also got lots of these ones, like pencil work. I mean, that's just beautiful. Evelyn Flinders, Boyfriend. And obviously some examples there of Dracula. Obviously it doesn't just feature the British one, but it's obviously an artist there, Dracula Lives, original cover art. Now I was worried when I bought this, I thought it's gonna be all 2000 AD, all gonna be Judge Dredd, mainly because of the cover. Somehow just gave me that impression. Actually, not much about Rupert. You've got Rupert on the front there, but not excessive amount about Rupert. But you've also got like When the Wind Blows and also the British Invasion. You've got sections about like Dave McKean, my favourite artist. I love Dave McKean's work. And also it breaks down by artist as well. Obviously not every single artist has been included, but there's a considerable number of really quite famous artists, but also obviously artists like this, John Armstrong, who I must admit, not familiar with. So uh, it's just John M. Burns, John Byrne. I think I know of John Byrne. Uh, Bob Dewar. I mean, just beautiful. Just really good inked pages, as well as obviously pages from the sort of... Actually, I think that one is a... Oh, wow. It's obviously the colour. It's got all the, the writing all put onto it, the lettering. So it's just great. Eagle and many other examples all the way through this. You've got here, Harry Linfield and so on. It's just a beautiful book. And then at the back, I think I say, it's got the section about bits of Dave McKean, again, my favourite. And also other examples there as well. So this book is just quality, absolute quality book. Masters of British Comic Art, really recommended, illustrated throughout. It, like I say, weighs a tonne. This one, £39.99. I don't know if it's in print still. I hope it is. Should hopefully be able to get copies of this still. Really, this should be readily available. It's one of those indispensable books, masterpiece. This one is very interesting, unusual, film fun. And this is 1920 to 1962, and it's got lots and lots of examples of many of the um, people I've never heard of. Lord Hamilton, you've got Gail Henry, no idea. And babies were big, when babies were big. I mean, all talking, all singing, all dancing, the Oxford bags. Oh, people, I mean, were, who were these people? But still, obviously, clearly at the time, they were in Jimmy Durante. I, I know who Jimmy Durante is. George Formby, I think I've even heard of George Formby. But there's other ones as well here. You've got Claude Holbert. Now, maybe people are turning around saying, I know who that is. You should know who that is. I don't. I have to admit, old mother, mother Riley, I have seen, I think Talking Pictures have got uh, some of her films on, or his films. But they Abbott and Costello, I've heard of them. Fickle Jades. Again, I'm not familiar with. Celebrates 2,000 issues. 2,000 issues of Film Fun. And I don't know how many copies of Film Fun still exist. Maybe in libraries, etc. Got a few examples. 2,000 issues from 1920 to 1962. This is a lovely little collection of stories, even if it does feature lots of fairly obscure artists and uh, some unusual artwork and stories. Jeff Hall. This is a lovely little book. This one, I think, is uh, Titan Books. And it's got uh, obviously a lovely little section at the start, giving you some details, as well as some of the stories of Jeff Hawk. At least this one is in English, whereas my other copy was in French. So uh, it's, uh, but still absolutely first rate artwork. Really sharp, really great little strips, good stories, and really worth checking out. I think there's only, sadly, two volumes of this. Two volumes. Why didn't they produce hundreds of volumes? I don't know how many stories there were of Jeff Hawk, but they just great little ones. So we're checking out as well. This one is a very odd one. Pages from History, illustrated by C.L. Doughty. And, but I love it. Really, really nice. Anything like sort of history, Roman, sort of medieval, sort of Tudor period, pirates. Great little stories. And this one's got so many comic strips. And it's, uh, oh, look at that, lovely restoration period. This one, see Charles II. 
just beautiful illustrations all the way through, getting more illustrations, as well as some actual strips. You've got here Pots Progress. Now, ones I must admit, never heard of. Pots Progress, I'm certain it's a classic, 1743. But it's just the Crusader as well, another example of another strip. And they're really very nice quality. Very, the sword for the stat holder. Huh. Okay, very interesting. So there's a lot of different strips. I wonder how many different, oh, the Black Pirate. There are quite a lot of different stories. Unfortunately, of course, whenever you get these, you end up having one or two stories and you think, oh, I wonder what happened next. What happened in the rest of the story? And of course, all you've got is one or two stories. And you've also got some illustrations at the back. But I love this little collection. This is uh, 100 of his illustrations and um, four complete comic strips. So, which is nice. But it would be nice, obviously, to have even more. Of course, whenever you get them, but at least it's got four, which is great. So that's that. And for today, because I've got another massive pile of books I want to go through, but I think I'm just going to reach a point where I just can't go through British comics anymore. But I will leave it to another day and go through those. And uh, hopefully uh, they will be of interest and likewise these ones. So this one, I'm just going to finish off on The Best of Boyfriend. I picked this one up only a couple of days ago. I just, I saw it in a shop. I thought, you know what? I think it was about 50 pence. I thought, yes, I'm going to have that. Got some great illustrations of the period, 1960s predominantly. And I think if it was, to, but also it's got adverts. You've got Home Wrecker. Uh, day off dates and other jazz. It's got information about all sort of the period. Um, also lots of the artists as well. And also Beat Mint. I've never heard of that. Beat Mint. Strictly for Wowsville. Can't beat that. I can't remember that at all. And we've got Truth About Lorna Barron. Another one I haven't. All set for a special date. The Pop Dance Column. Mark Denham's for the Casual You. You've got some, oh, there it is. Two piece carefree cutout. It's very handy. 007, and many, many other examples all the way through this. Long live McQueen, sadly he didn't. And uh, the swinging star for a top popper, and much, much more. So it's a lovely little collection. Now it doesn't have a huge amount of comic strips, but it does have a fair number. Reason well, but it's also got lots of other period information. So it's just nice, nice little collection of the best of boyfriend and I mentioned it would be nice if there were other best of best of Buster whatever whole range of best of Mirabelle best of Romeo some of the Romeo art was superb so I would love to see a collection of that so hope you have found this run through of some of my books of British ones and of course it doesn't include every single possible book that's ever been made about British comic art so I I haven't bought them all. You, you just can't. So it's, it's one of those things that you, you can get so many things. Hope you found this of interest. Bye.